Hey, my loves, it's your girl, Miss Mother XX here. Come on in the room, I said. Come on in the room. Jesus is my doctor, and he writes down all of my scriptures, and he gives me all of my medicine in my room. Whoa. Come on in the room, I said, come on in the room. Jesus is my doctor, and he writes down all of my scriptures, and he gives me all of my medicine in my room. Come on, babies, one more time. Come on in the room, I said, come on in the room. Jesus is my doctor, and he writes down all of my scriptures, and he gives me all of my medicine in my room. Hey, my babies, how y'all doing today? This is your girl, Miss Meta XO. XO Auntie, um... I hope everybody had a wonderful day. I hope everything's going all right with you. I hope you're just wonderful. Um, let me see who I was in the room. Um, hold on, let me pin this comment right quick. Um, and Claire, where's Claire says, so happy today's video is back at the normal time. Hey, Missy. Yes, I'm sorry, Claire. The last week or so, I've been moving, getting things straightened up, so I haven't been able to really keep um, a consistent time. Um, but we're we we beginning today. We'll be back more at a consistent daytime schedule. So and I'm just happy to be back. Ooh, how ooh, I like the way this daytime light is hitting that tea. Y'all like the way this daytime light hitting that tea? I love it. Okay, um, I am so thankful to be back um, at a at our regular daytime time. Um, also I want to say if anyone had a bad day, um, let it go. Don't let don't let that negative day. Um, affect you from being the person that you are. Don't let um, anyone's thoughts or opinions stop you from trying to accomplish everything that you want to accomplish because misery loves company and sometimes people are scared because of certain situations that they are sometimes they're scared to try things so they'll tell you not to do things because they're scared to try things. If that makes sense. Alright my loves, who's in the room? Let's check and see who's in the room. Okay, got Natalie Claire and some more people in the room. Okay. All right. So, today's show is going to be more of a testimony. It's going to be like a regular show like we do, but I want to do a testimony too. So, as you can see, the comment says, can transphobia come from a transgender person? Can transphobia come from a transgender person? And so, the reason why I picked that topic today was because um, someone I know who... Um, I consider a real close person. Um, I found out something about them yes last night. Well, not last night. I found out something about them to this morning that really shocked me. It, it, it shocked me to my core. Like, I really was honest to God shocked that this happened. So, the night before, um, I was having a conversation with somebody, and I was telling them how, like, y'all know, Auntie, I, I believe I have, I have a spiritual gift. Like, I I know my family members. If, you, if you're gay, bisexual, transgender, whatever, like, I can just, I can I can get that connection to you within 15, 10, 10, 10 seconds. That, that's just a gift I have. A gaydar, um, intuition, whatever you want to call it. That's just a gift that I am blessed with. So, um, someone I was talking to the night, we were talking about, you know, how they, you know, they're cisgender person um when a trans woman who, who identifies as cisgender and they were and they were telling me how when they first met me that you know um they did this and dropped their voice or whatnot to make them to let them know that um I was trained they were they were they, they were they were a, they were a family member if you know what I mean of the LGBT plus community and I basically said you know I already knew you know and and, and that wasn't anything it wasn't the same thing said malice. It's just like I don't have a gift. I have a gift because I know my family members. I've auntie, been around a lot of people and I just, I have that gift where I can tell. So um, she, she kind of took it the wrong way. Um, I didn't know that with her taking it the wrong way because of the fact that she's had some certain issues she's had to deal with, trauma and things of that nature. And so she identifies as cisgender. Now, my thing is, however somebody identifies, that's how they deserve to identify. If you are a trans woman that is identified as cisgender, that is your business. 
Um, it's, everybody's not comfortable enough to say, hey, I'm trans, hey, I'm this. Um, some people are not as strong as me, you know, and, and others. Um, where, the, where the problem came in is that we were having an awesome conversation this morning, and we had basically got back to a good level. And then all of a sudden, um, I think I asked something about, I don't remember exactly what happened. I know I asked something about um, the trans community or something. I asked something about being trans or something. And she stated that, um, whew, I got to get this out because cause, cause this right here shocked me. She said, um, I identify as a cisgender woman, just a woman. Um, and when it comes to trans people, um, I look at the, I look at them as somebody who um, has had like a medical, what did, I'm trying to figure out what she said. They have a medical disease or something like cancer. And when I heard that, I was like, wait a minute, did, did, did I just hear what I think I said? Like, and then it went to, um, well, I know a lot of trans women, people who think like that. And then when I heard that, what popped in my mind was Blair White. And we all know Blair White is a trans woman who does identify self 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 um she's a cis, she identifies as a cis and a woman and she basically is very harmful to the LGBT plus community and so for me when I heard that statement I've heard Black White say that I, I, I'm thinking of my wait a minute this is supposed to be my sister my friend and I'm getting Black White vibes from this and then the third thing hit me was she looked at me and said oh was that transphobic. I was shocked. Auntie is never at a loss for words, but I am totally, I was totally shocked. I did not know what to say um, because I've always told you on my platform, pronouns are very important. However someone identify as, identify as that's their business. And I respect anybody. If you are a non-binary person and you tell me to call you them, that's what I'm calling you. If you are a trans man and you tell me to call you a, 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 a call you he, that's what I'm calling you. If you're a trans woman and you tell me to call you just a woman, that's what I'm gonna call you because that's respect. And it doesn't take it doesn't take anything, it doesn't cost you anything to respect somebody. But for me, when I heard that, the first thing that went through my mind was the fact of I have so many people, especially young LGBT LGBT plus and queer and gay babies who say things like, "Oh, my mom wants to take me to a convergent camp because you know I'm, I'm crazy. I, I I have a mental or medical issue, uh, or, or you know things of the nature." People always always saying that LGBT plus community is is like mental in the head. They need a, they need they need a, a medical miracle. Those are those are so many things that I've seen and I heard and. What hurt me the most was the fact that this was coming from, yes, she identifies as a woman, and I respect that, and, and, and I will call her trans, but this is somebody who I considered an ally to the community, and we health community, but it's like, how can I consider your community when you... <sighs> I love my community. I love my LGBT plus community. I love the whole entire community. I am proud to walk in any truth. I will stand up for any member of my community. As a black trans woman, I sit here every day and I talk to you about black trans lives. But what hurts me so much is when it is somebody who I consider, who I thought was a friend, um, to be transphobic against uh, a, a, I, advocacy is my job. This is my career. This is what is changing my life. And that is a hard thing for me. That was a hard thing for me to swallow because if I see somebody online being transphobic or if I see somebody being homophobic online or out, out on the streets, that's different because I'm not going to see them. But when it's someone that you that you interact with on a daily basis, that's a very difficult thing to deal with. You know? And granted, um, she has been through... Um, some situations in her life, her past, that caused her to be like that. Um, but I always say this, no matter what you've been through, um, you have to understand that, um, I want to put this right way, you have to understand that no matter what happened in your past, you have to be able to treat 
everyone the way they want to be treated and treat people with um, a sense of respect. Because a lot of times we'll say things and we'll think they're okay. We'll think that if we're just going, you know, we, we, we're not, we won't have, we won't have malice attention behind them. But compared to the way other people identify and trigger words, it can be disrespectful and it can be hurtful. It can be harmful. It can be very, very harmful. And the thing about me is as a black trans woman, I've never been a person to um, bite my tongue, you know? So that is definitely one thing that I need you to pray for me with my loves because in the current situation I'm living in, I am having to fight a lot. Um, and, 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 it, and, it's, and it's not, a, and it's, some of the fight is not only coming from outside areas in the streets, it's also coming from inside. And that is the reason why I get up every day and I'm fighting because I don't, I don't want to be a person that just stands or something. Because if I let somebody be transphobic and I don't say nothing or I don't hold them accountable, then that means I'm, I, that means that I'm complicit and I will never ever be complicit to transphobia. So that is one reason why I want you, my love, to pray for me because I, I, I have to stand up for what's right. That is just me. OK, so definitely pray for me that everything keeps continues to work out because I can't I can't be fake. I, 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 I can't lie. I can't um, I can't be someone I'm not. I know your character. I know who you are, but that was transphobic. Period. I'm sorry. And, and, and I'm not one person that bought my tongue. And if it called me where I don't have nothing, I got to do it because I would rather stand on truth and honesty with nothing than to stand on a lie or to not say nothing and have everything. I can't do that. I, I stand here and I fight for my gang queer babies every day of the week because I, I enjoy doing this. I love doing this. It's a passion for me and it's my purpose. And I'm so thankful for everything that um, you, my loves have done for me. I'm glad for the path we're making. We, we have so many wonderful things that are coming that we're working on that I'm so excited about. But I can and I cannot and will not ever be complicit to homophobia or transphobia. I can't do it. I just simply, it's not, it's not in me the way that I was raised. I was raised by a strong black woman who was taught to um, who was taught to fight for your dreams. Don't let anybody tell you what you're not. And if you know something is wrong, you have to speak up against it. If not, you're complicit. You are complicit with it. And I will never be complicit to homophobia. I, I can't be, I can't not be complicit to the to homophobia transformation. I cannot be complicit to that. I just can't. Everything in me will not let me be complicit to it. I'm sorry. Okay? So, I just want... I, so, so to answer the question, can transphobia come from a person who is transgender? Yes, it can. And I know it can because I experienced it this morning. I am a person who is willing to talk to anybody. I'm willing to listen, but it, it is hard, especially when it, when it is a person who is dealing with certain issues um, from their past and they won't listen. If it was a person that would listen, then maybe, you know, Auntie is very understanding I could, but when it's someone who you, you, you really can't get them to listen, it's hard, it's hard. And I've tried so many times, I've tried and I've, and, 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 and I've tried and I tried and I tried and it's just they they refuse to it you my love you know how much advice I give and you know how much how much how many times my baby say oh my auntie you get a fair, the, the, the best advice when it comes to certain situation this person will not receive what I want to say they'll hear what I want to say and they'll listen but they won't receive and it's a difference between hearing listening and receiving because you can hear and listen to anything but receiving it means are you going to take it in? Are you going to say, okay, wait a minute. Let me look and examine this. 
That's that's receiving. Are you going to just say, okay, yeah, okay, but that's it. And you push it away. That's not receiving it. There are so many people who are transgender um, and who are transphobic and don't even know it. There's so many people who are gay and, gay, um, and are homophobic and don't even know it. So we have to make sure that we are doing everything that we're supposed to be doing, making sure that um, we are holding people accountable for the action they do. Because I believe in I believe in giving everybody a chance. I believe in hearing everybody out. But when I get to a level to where I know there's a form, there's something going on there, and it's no talking because you won't listen, it becomes a very hard, hard situation. And I tell anybody, when you feel like you you know everything, that's a dangerous thing. Because I don't know, I don't care who you are, um, everybody can still learn something. Everybody can still learn something. We should all listen. When you get to where you don't want to listen, and you and, and I've seen times to where I tried to talk to this person, and when I try to talk, they zone out somewhere else. They zone out. But when when but when they're saying something to me, I am all ears. I am listening. And I feel like as a black trans woman, I should deserve the respect. But and especially when this is coming from somebody who is not black. Because then I get to the suspicion of where I feel like, okay, because you're because you're a non-black person, it's like, are you thinking that you're better than me? Cause that, cause that's that's what that's what I start to get when I try to tell you something, and you just don't. It makes me think that you think that you're better than me. Just because I'm a black trans woman, I know that I'm smart. I know I have a lot to give to the world, and I know I'm not a dumb person. I have so much to give, and I have so much heart, and I have so much loyalty. But I don't always get that back from especially certain um, people in the community who are. You know. Okay. Let me talk a little bit. So we have to make sure that we are dealing with things. Um, Nikki. Hey, Nikki. Just came in. It came in. Um, I'm just talking about a situation that I had to deal with where um, I was. I experienced, some, I experienced what I call some transphobia from another trans. trans well, a cis. As, from a woman. I'll say that. From a woman. Okay, from a woman. And it was very, very hard because I never experienced somebody transphobic from somebody of the same experience. I never, never in my life. And it gave me, it, it really gave me Blair White vibes. And anybody who knows Blair White is very transphobic. She's very by herself. She always is, is bashing the community as a person of trans. It's, it's, it's I, I, I just don't get it. I, I I am in shock of that level. I don't get it. Okay, my babies. Um, let's open the floor up to um, any comments, any discussion. But that's what I just had to vent and get off my chest for the day. So any comments, any discussion, anything up? I love you, my babies, so, so much. Hey. <laughs> Okay, my babies, if there are no discussion, if there are no comments, I love you with all my heart. Um, we'll be back um, with another show tomorrow. We, we, we were going to say this regular schedule time. I'm going to get back to the, to the afternoon schedule. I love you with all my heart, okay? Be beautiful. Be blessed. Bye. Oh, hold on. I finna go in, then Nikki come and popped up right then. She said, don't let it get you down. Nikki, I promise you, I will not let it get me down, my love. I promise you, okay? <laughs> We are going to be beautiful. We're going to be wonderful. We're going to get through it, okay? As you can see, I still have a smile on my face. It took me a minute to get back to um, Melody after that hour, so I had to just meditate, relax, and release. But I I, I can't let anybody stop me from the path of my... I can't let anybody stop me from my work as advocacy because I, 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 I don't consider myself an ally. I wear, my, I wear who I am proudly and boldly. And I'm not afraid to say that. And I will represent and love for my whole entire LGBTQIA plus community, okay? I love you, okay? 
People are closed, but I love you being queen. Oh, thank you, my baby. Oh, thank you for telling me you got my back for sure. Thank you, my baby. Nick, you know I love you, my baby. Thank you, sweetie. Thank you so, so much, sweetie. I absolutely love you too, okay? My babies, I love you so, so much. I love you for everything you do, everything you are. You are just wonderful. Thank you again for supporting this black trans woman, as you always do. And remember, you're fabulous, wonderful, beautiful, all that rolled into one, okay? All that rolled into one. I love you too, Nick Nick. Okay, so my baby, so understand I love you. Uh, we'll be back. We'll be back at this regular schedule time pretty much in this time frame. We're getting back to a daytime schedule. And I love you with all my heart, okay? Bye, my babies.